Welcome to Security Guy TV, SecurityGuyRadio.com at, where am I again? Infuse 2017. I do so many trade shows, I forget sometimes. I know that is. Run on by uh, Guidance Software, one of my favorites. So, what's your name, sir? Uh, Steve Whelan. Hold it up a little higher there, Steve. Okay. And what do you do? I'm the CEO of Samori and retired law enforcement from Delaware State Police. Good for you. I love cops talking about this. And cops in this space are unusual Yeah. Well, in the technical space. You know, it's getting yeah, better. It's but. getting better. And it's so, what do you, so, spell the name of your company, give me the website. It's Samori. It's S U M U R I. And what do you guys do? Uh, we do digital forensics, so a lot of services that relate around digital forensics. We're the makers of Paladin. That's what most people know us for. Yeah. That's a Linux forensic suite that we give away for free or donationware. Yeah. If you want to support the project, um, it's used all over the world, and it's, we kind of give it away because my background, we did a lot of cases, and we noted that a lot of people needed help. There's no budgets in law enforcement, so right. we try to help out with that. Now, when did you get into that space in law enforcement? You're, young, you're a little younger than I am. Wow. So I started policing in 92. Yeah. And then when I actually got it into forensics, when they started asking me to do electronic evidence cases was 2007. Oh, okay. So Fairly recent. So I officially got, I'm sorry, not 2007, 1997. Oh, that's very early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I started to get my official training like in 1999. Yeah, that's right when NCASE started, kind of around 96-ish. Yeah, so I remember when NCASE actually came out and then demoed their first version 1.0 at, yeah. our, at our conference in IASIS where I got my training. Yeah. It was very entertaining. Very interesting. I, yeah. I, I used to do it with just the old uh, Microsoft uh, sector editor, remember? Oh, just get it. Just get it, right? Yeah, that's what I learned. Finally went away, I don't know, after XP or something like that. I wish so. they had kept it, but that was interesting. Uh, all right, so tell us what you guys do specifically. There, it seems like you do several things yeah so we do we do training we do okay. services so digital forensics training just about anything okay uh services i can mail your mail my hard drive to you guys you'll look at it for me oh we can do anything okay good yep absolutely so and then we also do hardware so we do forensic hardware that we design from the ground up and it's oh. not just forensics it's high-end workstations but in our field because we're known for forensics that's typically what we do so forensics e-discovery cryptanalysis workstations but we've been doing a lot more servers now because there's a lot more need for large servers for at a low price but good hardware so yeah so you're setting up the hardware with the forensic stuff kind of in place so we don't have to go back and reinvent the wheel yeah so we actually set up whole forensic labs oh wow that's what we do yeah so right. we've been policing for a long time and i've been doing forensics for over 20 years and a lot of people on our team they're all certified forensic examiners they all do this we're actually active examiners we work in the field so we do this it's not like we just we're tech guys and go let's put a forensics box <laughs> together exactly. that's a big difference yeah yeah so we, we test everything everything's you know we know the same tools that everyone else is using which is why we pride ourselves on what we do um and the other thing too is we have a heart like you know money's not what drives us right what drives us is the fact that i as a police officer for all these years and I've seen the worst the worst like everyone does and you want to do something about it you want to right. help so we try to give law enforcement those that protect us you know the best tools that you can get the the best software you can get for the best price right. that you can get and then corporations get the benefit from the work that we do for law enforcement so tell, talk to me about the learning curve in law enforcement so I had my first computer in 1984 right you weren't yeah. even a cop yet oh no I wasn't a cop yet no. I would just started as a rookie actually it was 83 I take that back and it was a televideo it had two floppy, actual floppy drives, the old school floppy drives. Right. One was operating system, one I played Frogger, and I did Quicken, and it would count to a million in 15 minutes. Gotcha. 15 minutes, that's fabulous, you know. Now it's a nanosecond, right? Yes. Uh, so we've come a long way on that, but when I brought that computer into the, into the station, what's that, Harold? Well, Chief, that's called a personal computer. We don't need police computers and police work. Get it out of here. And I used to write my reports on it. He did not like it. Yeah. And then CAD came out. Ooh, computer, computer aided dispatch. Culver City PD still has CAD. I said, really, Donna, do you have to call it computer-aided? I mean, it's 2017, right? Right, right. So there's this, you know, curve where you have to pull the cops kicking and screaming. Is that going away? Is it getting better? You um, are very unusual in your demographic to learn computers, right? Yeah, so actually... You're probably the only guy in your department that did it. The funny thing was, is I actually, the only class I took in college for computing, I got a D. So the right. worst grade I've ever gotten. It's all self-taught. I, I, I self-taught myself, yeah. Yeah, so it's... <laughs> Basically, the, the curve is getting better. Like everybody knows you need it. Like ninety percent of all things that we say do everything, like what you're doing right now, it's all communicated electronically. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So back in the old days, you know, everything was physical. We searched current crime scenes physically. Yeah. So the mindset hasn't quite got there yet. That it's you amazing. know, you should be put more focus on the digital evidence. The most than, focus. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. You still need old school, you know, you know policing, sure. but yeah, you still need to put a lot more effort, effort on that. The problem is, is that this is an expensive field, which is one of the reasons why we try to help out with that. Um, and when you start saying like, well, I need a workstation that costs this much, and oh, I need five of those, and then I need a server to hold all this data. And now with like body cams and stuff like that, oh, it yeah. gets quite expensive. The storage, you know, everybody I mean, yeah. wants with the policing that's out there now, everybody wants everything documented. So it, it gets quite expensive. And that, I think that's what is the hard point is the expensive part. Uh, what are you finding in, in the legal field, how the cases are, are coming before the courts? Are we winning that? Because, I mean, I used to make up handling procedures for the digital forensics, right? I took the computer and I put it in a bag and I sealed it and I wrote it in a log. And this guy opened it up. I used old police for, uh, evidence handling techniques right. the best I could. Because there really wasn't any standards in 1996 when the forensics on a hard drive, right? Not so much. They are right. beginning, yeah. Yeah, and now... Uh, you know, when you go to a court and you say, well, Ryan, we found this on the hard drive. It, it was deleted, but we found it. Well, it was deleted. Well, how did you find it? That's not possible. You know, you're dealing with people that don't get the technology side of it. Are the cases, you know, matching the technology legally? Are we are we able to, to win in court with these things now? It's, it's getting there. Matter of fact, we were having this discussion with Las Vegas PD just the other day when okay. we were helping them out. And this guy is an expert on this, and this is what he teaches. And he was saying that it, the hard part is trying to um, differentiate the fact that the old analogy was using like a file cabinet and yeah. like the files inside, but that's not the same with digital evidence. And with the laws that we have in place to protect privacy, it's even people and judges aren't interpreting that properly. Oh, interesting. Okay. So it, it's it, it, what he said, and I'll just use him because he teaches us. Yeah. He said they're usually about five years behind. Yeah, I mean, and the security is kind of five years behind, you know, smartphones and five years behind video analytics and you know the, the industry users yeah well, not see, the innovators well, you're, the you're ahead is, yeah it's like technology changes every three months yeah yeah you know new technology new generations and stuff and if you think that the court system is about five years behind multiply that times five that's how bad it is so yeah there's needs to be a lot more education and then case law needs to catch up based on cases that come to courts um hopefully we'll get there soon so i drove uh, cross country on route 66 last year what a trip that was and there's these little bitty police departments. I mean, three guys, the chief and two guys. Um, what would you say to that sort of police department that say, you know, you know what, Bob, we ought to get into doing this. And I'm not sure how we should do it. And what do you tell them? Do you say, <laughs> let's start out with, you know, uh, here's some software to start searching your sectors in your city hall. I mean, no, absolutely how can they not. get into it? They got to get training. So, okay, training first. All right. Yeah, so there are some. So like, Can they um, outsource first, though, to say, you know, we know we should do it. Let me give it to you. Most of those guys would go to like a regional crime forensics lab. So I would okay. partner with those. And then if your FBI is ICAC, so for inner crimes against children, if it's yeah. for sexual exploitation. But, you know, a little bitty department with three guys, maybe they can't afford that kind of trip. Is there something uh, they can do? Yeah, well, yeah, they. I would either. See, the sad part is if it's a really, really small department, you need a dedicated person. Yeah. That's the other problem we find, too, is that once a person gets into this field, because of old school policing mentality, everybody wants to rotate, you know, like, oh, we got to rotate you after three years. Oh, I know. Three years, you're just learning how oh, to do this. Oh, that's, that's a good point. Just I mean, learning. Yeah. Motors, you got rotated, and even if you yeah. want, didn't want to, but it's so not the same thing. So they're thinking back to the old vice units and, yeah. you know, narcotics, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, yeah, rotate someone after three years because you burn out. Well. You can make an argument that for the sexual exploitation cases, but you're just learning forensics after three years. Right. Like you're just getting comfortable. Small departments like that, it helps to partner with a larger department in the okay. area, but then that adds to their caseload. Maybe the sheriff's, sheriff's agency that is the oversight of the eight the county or something. Yeah, until you're yeah. ready to dedicate a person, that's the best advice yeah. I can give, dedicate a person. Get a person, train them, make them stay, <laughs> make <laughs> them learn. <laughs> that's a hard part too. Once you train someone, there's a lot of attrition, they leave. So, like, oh, I'm smart now, I can go get a job oh, and make true. good money. So not, not you know, police. I tried that model with my radio show, it didn't work. I'm still <laughs> working on uh, that money part, but anyway. Uh, so here's what I find interesting. You know, my kids think that a phone is a radio and a TV and everything, right? Yes. And they don't, they've never listened to, uh, you know, a radio at home. That's like great grandmother's radio. Mm -hmm. They don't really listen to the radio in their car. They plug their iPod in, right? That's the group that's joining the police academy at 21 now. I'm not seeing that generation of the police officers because they're a cop and cops are a certain sort of person. I'm not seeing a whole department full of digital forensic experts coming into the academy no. that know more about it than you and I did. I'm not seeing that. Well, what I'm seeing is, and I think it's 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 starting to fade away, Okay, is that to get in a special unit, and it's a selective field, right, and yeah. selective seats, and not number of seats, 
it's the good old boy kind of thing. Like, right. You know, we're going to pick this guy or that guy because he's close to retirement or he's my friend or, and, and that's who gets in instead of actually doing what they, or, you know, what they're trained to do or what they, you know, their knowledge base. Right. So, but I see that's better. Like I just finally met someone in my department that I'd never even met before came on after I retired and I'm like, who are you? And they're like, oh yeah, I work for the high tech crime unit coming into it. I'm like, I did not know. So younger person? So younger person. So now I'm like, this is great. This is awesome. Do you so. think that the, that, that it has something to do with the fact that there, there's my phone again. Every show, security guys interrupted. Oh, that's ISIS calling. They always cover these crank calls. <laughs> I, Give me I, your phone, I'll analyze it. I had a guy last week that says, oh, Microsoft, I'm going to check your computer. I said, you're ISIS. Oh, man, he went on a whole tirade against me wow. swearing. So anyway, we digress. So my point is, I think the young cops, because they're cops, makes them a certain sort of person in a certain way well, that doesn't lend itself. And I'm not, I'm not knocking you guys, right, because I'm a cop. They're practical people. They're straightforward people. They're honest people. They want to get the thing done. And, you know, my friend Paul, bless his heart, who still doesn't balance his checkbook with Quicken. He uses a pencil and a paper still after 40 years. I'm going, Paul, really? He doesn't see a need for it, right? And even when I talk to young cops, I don't see that they can work their phone, but they're still not techies like I expect them to be. I don't know. Well, at least they're 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 better in a to adapt to the technical side. No, that's okay, adapting, okay. But but the thing that is really important, and I, I stress this as well too, um, there's a big argument, can you do you hire civilians, do you, do, or do you hire, you know, actually law enforcement? That's a good argument. I think there's good arguments for both sides, yeah. I'll tell you that. Um, but it is an advantage to be a cop first, be an investigator, learn how to do investigations, and then apply that to digital forensics, as opposed to, you know, someone that's civilian and actually um, comes straight out of college and then goes, they didn't know all about the tech stuff and they can actually get certified in certain forensic programs, but they didn't learn how to do the investigations. Well, yet. this is a brilliant point. I, I, so, one of my best friends, Mike O'Brien, has been around forever. Uh, he helped us write that code back in the day in the 90s to search different sectors on a big case I had, mm -hmm. right? And I've always used him to do forensics, to do special stuff, special programming. And one day he looked at me and he says, how do you know this guy was up to that? And I go, I don't know. It's my cop thing. I just knew the guy was doing it. And he goes, I have no idea. I said, I can program all the ones and zeros you want. I can build databases. I can push the button. I don't understand the people part. But when the cop and the digital guy work together, mm -hmm. it's it's brilliant. And I think this is what we need to see more of. So I would argue on your side that... We, the cops are doing the investigations, and we bring in that young guy that's a computer genius, and you guys work together on that case. Oh, yeah, it's unstoppable. Definitely a benefit. But there's a reluctance. Oh, you're not a cop. You're not part of the club. And so I can see them saying, we want our oh, buddy to have there's the There's civilians that I know that work in this field that I will trust more than the law enforcement guys. That oh, no, I agree field, with you. Right. Versa. But, but I mean, so, isn't there that kind of that, you know, like you said. But the synergy, yeah, together is great. And then I think that's where we need to go. And we see that with the private, I'm sorry, well, private security, both cyber and physical, they hardly talk to each other at right. that level, right? And right. if they did talk to each other, they would have more information. That's really fascinating. Yeah, there's a guy that was my neighbor. Uh, he passed away a few years ago, but he was head of security for MetLife. And just sitting talking to him, even though I've been policing for all these years as well, I've learned stuff from him that I would never even think of. Just right. Because, and he never touched a computer, ever. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So I could use what he taught me and what I learned from yeah. him in my investigations. Everything's digital. I mean, that's the way it goes. So, uh, give us your website one it's, more time. It's uh, samori.com, S-U-M-U-R-I.com. And how long have you guys been around? Uh, we've been around for, whoa, since 2010, so seven years now. Oh, excellent. All right. So. Well, thanks for coming on Security Guy Radio. Yeah, Security really Guy TV. Yeah, appreciate it. Nice to talk to yeah, you. Yeah, and again. anytime you want to, you know, Skype into the show and give us an update on something, let me know, and we'll get you oh, live awesome. in the studio. and uh, happy to. Tell us I think this is such fast pace, we need to keep up with the latest thing. Yeah, keep it, absolutely. Keep it going. Thanks for coming on the right, show, and thanks, and thanks for your service. All right, All right. take care.